Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and bring them out in bite-sized pieces. So today we've got some great news about mass adoption. First up, El Salvador to airdrop $30 in Bitcoin to every adult citizen. And this is going to take place a lot sooner than what people think, because the law was just passed. Now they're going to put this uh, into action. So we'll take a look at what's going on there on top of a uh, little snippet of uh, how Bitcoin investor Peter Thiel turned a retirement account into a $5 billion tax-free piggy bank. And now you can do the exact same thing. And then uh, we'll go over some uh, more stories about mass adoption as uh, Andreessen Horowitz triples down on blockchain stars with a massive $2.2 billion crypto fund. And that looks pretty good, uh, especially since this is one of the largest that they have ever done. And it looks like institutions really want to get into the cryptocurrency and digital asset game. So we'll take a look at that. And then finally, I just want to talk about what was said yesterday over on Alex Maschioli show as far as Voyager and how Steve Ehrlich, uh, the CEO, came out and gave us some pretty great information about what's going to go on with the token swap, what is going to happen with uh, Voyager, and of course, uh, that is Landon Castle, and what is going on with NASCAR and their uh, marketing campaign. So take a look at all those things, uh, but first, let's take a look at the uh, uh, market. And just so you know, we're down a little bit. That's a bummer. What are you going to do? It's uh, 1.3 trillion. Today is June 25th. It's 9 a.m. El Paso, Texas time, and we're down. What happened? Well, one of the things that happened was that we had a nice little rebound. It went from 1.1 trillion to 1.3 trillion, which is a good $200 billion. So not a bad uh, couple of days as far as an inflow of money. So usually when we see something like that, people are gonna take profits and you should take profits, not investment advice. This is just investment opinion. And uh, remember, nobody ever went broke taking profits. And we can talk about the diamond hands and everything else, whatever else, but if you have to take profits, Nothing wrong with taking a little profits on the way up because it's probably going to go back down again. And uh, here we are going back down. So what's going on? Well, people want to take profits, and that is not uh, unlikely. People think that there's, a, as far as the relative strength index, is a little bit uh, over overbought. So they uh, took some profits. Also, on top of that, people are a little bit scared about uh, the Bitcoin futures options about to expire today. So uh, as far as June, uh, we've looked at 28 December 2020 was the first trade. Last trade is today, settlement 28 June. So what does that mean? Uh, it means a little volatility. I do not care about volatility because I'm just here for the long haul. I'll, I'll be in here for a long time. I've been in since 2017 and I'll be in in cell 2047. If I'm still, I don't know if I'll still be around or not, uh, live, but uh, I'll be here for the long haul. And that's why I like to talk about what's going on as far as mass adoption and the long-term effect of crypto and digital assets. So let's just uh, let's just jump in and see what we got. Uh, actually, first of all, anything, everything's down. Dogecoin's up 3%, amazing. Uh, da -da 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 -da. That's pretty much it. All right, let's go to the big story. That's what we're here for anyhow. So El Salvador to airdrop $30 in Bitcoin to every adult citizen. I think this is a, is a pretty big thing. Um, and my wife looked at it, she's like, well, 30 bucks, you know, what, who cares about that? Well, if you extrapolate that $30 to every citizen that is in El Salvador, that's big news. And the next question really is, well, how much does everybody in El Salvador even make? Is that even, you know, like something they can, they can do? Look, uh, I'm in America and I do pretty well. And uh, if someone's gonna give me 30 bucks in Bitcoin, I'm taking that 30 bucks. But in El Salvador, just so you know, uh, the average person in El Salvador makes around $1,700 per month. Not too bad. Uh, salaries range from $430 per month, which is the lowest average, to $7,600 per month, which is the highest average. So that's a, that's a pretty big variance. Let me, let me uh, jump on back here. So what is going on? Well, the president of El Salvador has announced the government will airdrop $30 worth of Bitcoin to every adult citizen of the country. And that is what is going on. Let me blow this up so you can see it. So El Salvador's government will need to purchase the required Bitcoin it intends to distribute, adding more than 100 million in buying pressure on markets. And that's another big thing. So if you're going to actually, uh, you know, put this out to all your citizens and you're gonna airdrop it, you gotta get it from somewhere, which means you gotta buy a lot of Bitcoin. So Willie Wu uh, tweeted out that Bitcoin's global user base will grow by two and a half percent for this one country. So think of it this way. Uh, nobody wants to be the first, but nobody wants to be the last. And if you got El Salvador coming in and going, we're going to make this legal tender, 
Sounds pretty good. Now you have other countries like Paraguay, other different countries in Central America looking at it. And I've even heard rumors about uh, Canada getting on this whole kick as far as Bitcoin. So uh, one country at a time, and we'll just grow that 2.5%, 5%, 10%, 20%, and off we go. Uh, others place the Salvadorian adult population as high as 6.5 million, which is the total population. That means that 195 million worth of Bitcoin will be airdropped across the entire country. And then to finish this up, uh, just so you know that it's not gonna happen tomorrow, but it's gonna happen pretty fast. President uh, Bukele, I think I nailed that, also stated that the country's much celebrated Bitcoin law, recognized Bitcoin as legal currency nationwide, will come into effect on September 7th. So look, we're almost in July. So you got July and August, and then September 7th is gonna happen. That's pretty darn good for a government to make this many changes and actually get it actually done. I thought it was gonna take like six months, a year, 18 months, but uh, here we are. So that is big news, I think, uh, for mass adoption. And I just think this is just one of the few countries that is uh, in first in line. I think we're gonna see a lot more coming on the pipe, but again, it really all depends. And the big thing is that in some countries, it's like, we're gonna use this legal tender in other countries, America, Europe, Canada, they're like, we're going to see this as just how it is, which is um, property. So we'll see how that all works out. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. So this one, tech mogul Peter Thiel turned a retirement account into $5 billion. What the heck's going on? Because first of all, we're talking about a Roth IRA. And the max you can do is between six and 7,000, depending. Uh, so how did he do this, first of all? And what does this mean for you? Well, it's going to make sense in a little bit. So over the last 20 years, Teal has quietly turned his Roth IRA, the same thing that I have, uh, a humdrum retirement vehicle intended to spur Americans to save for their golden years into our, a gargantuan tax exempt piggy bank. Teal took a retirement account worth less than two grand in 1999 and spun it into a $5 billion windfall. So as long as Teal wants to withdraw his money until April 27, when he is six months shy of his 60th birthday, he will never have to pay a penny of tax on those billions. So look, I'm not here for the short-term things. Uh, I'm here for the long run. And if you've been around for a long time, you know that uh, some of the best investment strategies and the people who made the most amount of money in crypto did a very simple thing. They bought and hold. And then the problem is it's not how much you make, it is how much you keep. And when we take a look at Peter Thiel, who is a pretty smart guy as far as investment goes in business, he was part of that PayPal mafia. He has branched out into Bitcoin. He has branched out into Bitcoin mining and a host of other things that he's done along the way. When you see these types of things, that's what smart money does. They look down the road for the the long-term effect. So if you're watching this video, chances are you're pretty smart with, with uh, your cash. You're pretty uh, interested in how you can grow it and do those things. Again, I can't tell you what to do. I can only tell you what I'm doing. And what I'm doing is I'm using a cryptocurrency IRA and it works out pretty well for me. I think I'm gonna be around till I'm 60. And when I get to that point, uh, I just have to plan for the future. And um, if you don't, uh, if, you, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And this is just one of the things that I think uh, a lot of people should really look into. So that's what we got. Um, to finish this up, Pro ProPublica, which is the name of this organization, uh, or where I'm reading this from, has obtained a trove of IRS tax return data on thousands of the country's wealthiest people covering more than 15 years. And what this secret information reveals, which is not really secret, uh, is that while most Americans are dutifully paying taxes, chipping in their part to fund the military, highways, and safety net programs, the country's richest citizens are finding ways to sidestep the tax system. One of the most surprising of techniques involves the Roth IRA, which limits most people to contribute just six grand each month, or each year, excuse me. So here's the thing. I still got to pay taxes on all the land that I own. Okay, I can't get around that. And that's where a lot of different things come through. State taxes. Now with government taxes, that goes to fund a whole host of things. And I'll just be honest with you. I think they're mismanaging my money. Why is it that I have to put my money into the government when they mismanage it uh, horribly? And on top of that, they take that money and go, thanks for that money. We're just going to keep printing and it's going to devalue all the dollars that, that you put in. And also, we want to tax you some more. So it's up to you to decide uh, what 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 is best for you and your family. I will just say that. 
I'm not here to sidestep anything. I've been paying taxes since I was 15 years old, eight years in the military, and all the different uh, decades of just work that I've done anyhow. And uh, I'm tired of it. And I just don't think that uh, we should really be in there. And that's that's me to say. And people say, oh, well, you're, you're sidestepping everything. Look, man, I still got to pay taxes. I will never get around that. But I'm saying the exorbitant amount of tax I have to pay is ridiculous. And that's what I'll go for. So for me personally, this is what I, uh, I think about. I need to uh, just minimize the tax, not uh, illegally getting around it, but doing the things that I can do. This also links me to my next point. So the IRS is going to deny you tax-free crypto-to-crypto swaps. Did you know that? So if you swap Bitcoin for a stable coin like USDC or Tether, you're going to pay taxes on that, on the gains that you did. The IRS says exchange of one type of crypto for another are taxable, even if no cash changes hands. The tax law was changed by statute to say that starting January 1st, 2018, crypto trades are taxable. So that's a big bummer. So here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to knock out two birds with one stone. And how do I do that? I'm going to use iTrust Capital. iTrust is what I've been using for a couple of years now. Did you know, real quick, that they have all these different cryptocurrencies and precious metals, gold and silver, and these are actual gold and silver, which is uh, stored in the Canadian National Mint. So you can, if you're a gold bug or if you just like gold and silver, I own both of those. I also own cryptocurrencies. Here's all the cryptocurrencies that you can actually buy into in your Roth IRA or SEP or traditional, whatever you want to do. Bitcoin, Ethereum, you can, you can see this. Uh, I don't need to read this to you. That's a lot of stuff, right? And then also on that whole thing with trading, a lot of you traders out there, look, I trade a little bit myself. I'm very bad at it. I'm just letting you know. But uh, all the traders out there, all those things are taxable. However, this is my account and I've blurred some things out, obviously. But uh, if you can see it, like I can buy and sell within my Roth IRA account and I can put that into US dollars. And guess what? I can trade that, I can get out of Bitcoin or Ethereum or all the different cryptos that are available on iTrust. And then what I can do is I can hold on to that do those dollars. And then once the uh, price uh, bottoms out, I can buy it right back. And I don't pay a dime in taxes. That's the beauty of a Roth IRA. So I did a quick video, it's about 20 or so minutes long. I will link in the description. I talk about everything that has to do with uh, Roth, traditional SEPs and IRAs, and I break it down to the most basic things you need to know. You can check it out, I'll link in the description. And uh, that is really it. So uh, I use iTrust Cryptocurrency IRA. There's a link in the description also for give you some discounts. You can check it out, do your own research. All right, and finally, well, second to last, just, you know, I'll go this very really quickly. Andreessen Horowitz triples down on blockchain startups with 2.2 billion crypto fund. And while the crypto market's most recent hype seems to be dying down, uh, these guys put in 2.2 billion into a crypto fund. It's the firm's largest vertical fund ever. And in 2018, they, uh, they put in 300 million, then 515 million in April of last year. And that brings them up to 18.8 billion assets under management. So when we take a look at smart money, like take a look what Teal did with his with his uh, his IRA. Take a look at also what he's doing with uh, Bitcoin mining operations. And if you haven't checked out that video yesterday from when we talked about Bitcoin mining in Texas, I think it's an undervalued video. I'm not a big sensationalistic guy, right? I don't put in that you know crypto is going to explode tomorrow and uh, Bitcoin's going to 10 million dollars, something stupid like that. So. Um, it's just, it is what it is. I think it's one of the more important videos I've done about where things are going as far as like China Bitcoin mining going in the United States. And I'll link it also at the end. And then lastly, just so you know that uh, uh, these guys, Andreessen Horowitz, they're pretty smart people. They've already invested into things like NBA top shot maker Dapper Labs, which hit seven and a half billion, blockchain infrastructure, Definity, nine and a half billion valuation. And they love the series A of Uniswap. So I just like these these stories just to see what smart money is doing and investors are doing because they're getting into the space which is where we are at and i like to see that so let me just think in the comments section and then we'll finish up with just a quick snippet of yesterday's video uh it was over on alex maschioli's show and we talked about racing to mass adoption <laughs> nascar driving so this was it was me alex uh, Steve from Voyager and uh, Landon Castle, who drives uh, the Voyager car on the NASR, NASR, NASCAR Xfinity series. And I will just say like this, I'm going to link that video also. I think I'll put it at the end. And 
I know a lot of people have been disappointed with Voyager. When I called Voyager the price, it was 29 cents on January 7th, 2021. You can go watch the video. I did a bunch of price predictions, which we're gonna do another one at the end of June, which is coming up pretty fast. And in the beginning, it was every, it was great because it went from 29 cents to 60 cents to a dollar, two, three, four, five, and it hit all the way to seven dollars. I think seven dollars eleven cents, which is pretty darn good. But then, as people were watching these videos, you know, they were watching them in March and then April and then May, and then they said, "Well, I invested into Voyager when you said to invest in Voyager." I'm like, "I said to invest in Voyager at 29 cents, and I thought it was going to 30 dollars." And let me just be clear, I still think it's going to 30 dollars. The problem is is that we need real world utility. And Steve over there at uh, Voyager had to fix a lot of things because they went from 70,000 users to almost 2 million now. And, th and their latest earnings reports said they're at 1.6 million users. Imagine trying to drink from that fire hose every day. So they've done it. He said, give me 90 days, did, did well. He's got the customer support. A lot of different things have been uh, improved. So I'm pretty happy. And that's why I recommend them again. I stopped for a while and they're going places. The thing is, we need to do that uh, token swap, which is uh, everything that goes over from uh, Ethos and all the different uh, tokens that they have because they're gonna uh, they merge with LGO uh, to the new token, which is going to supposed to happen on June 30th. And I questioned him. The very first question of this video was, Steve, did you do what you say we're gonna do? Because you told me June 30th. And in that video, he said, Yes, we are on track for a June 30th token swap. So we're gonna do the token swap. It's gonna take about 30 or 45 days to so let everybody get in there. Then they're going to do the Voyager loyalty program, which is going to give actual real world utility uh, to uh, Voyager and that uh, Voyager token, which is going to be you're going to be able to get uh, more yield. You can go from up to like 1.5 percent, depending on the amount of Voyager tokens, a debit card, a credit card, uh, the reduction in fees and a couple of other things that uh, escape me right now. And that's what's going to really give utility to Voyager on top of the fact that they are expecting to go from two million to roughly 10 million by the end of the year. So just imagine that. So I will link that video. You can watch everything that Steve says and Landon talks about as far as the nationwide campaign they're doing with NASCAR. And I think it's a great thing. So uh, I think we're gonna see fireworks uh, with everything. And what's, which is amazing to me is he's like, we're gonna do that loyalty program kickoff in August. So imagine you have the loyalty program, program in August for Voyager. You have Bitcoin kind of coming out of a sideways channel and this uh, this wike off uh, chart which people think is uh, is is true. I think it, it could definitely be true. And then we're going to see August do pretty well for as far as like Cardano because the smart contracts come out. EIP 1559 for Ethereum. I think we're going to see a lot of things happen in August, September, October, November, maybe even December. And uh, we'll see where the market goes. But anyhow, uh, that is it for today. So look, uh, thanks for sticking with me all the way to the end. I appreciate it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about here on this channel are time sensitive. Also, the things that are uh, swirling over here, those are crypto art with acrylic. You can find the uh, crypto art link in the description with a discount. If you want to actually have physical art on your wall, not NFTs, like physical art, you can check that out. And that is it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.